better speaking in english yeah. okay i mean there are some people with they don't know tamil right ah, ah yes okay yeah that's what i just want to ask okay okay, okay anyway thank you okay. so thank you for nice introduction <laughs> okay, okay so okay. today actually we are going to talk about i mean we are going to look at some something on multivariable calculus in other words functions of several variable calculus or some functions of several variable so i'm going to introduce some basic things and how to do how, what what is the thing going on and some state some theorems and then i will solve some problems on that suppose if we have time like i mean if you could finish many things then we can we try to do something else in the next class i mean i i i, I am i supposed to do two classes actually this in this actually in this lecture series uh, so one is actually surely about multivariable calculus but another i have to check like if i have time i will go for some other things otherwise i will only stick with multivariable calculus so the purpose of purpose of this is to do actually mainly uh, in in these exams like you could not maybe get like you will be in the border right some there are some like only you may have some four or five marks but here actually this these questions on multivariate calculus are very useful very easy and useful so that's why i just wanted to do these things basically actually in, when i was in bsc msc and i i will never attend this thing actually when i was in doing when i was attending these exams i never tried to do these things now i, I wanted to help you to do these things yeah so actually don't hesitate to ask any time doubts please stop me ask doubts that time itself okay so also i wanted it to be in interactive actually i don't wanted to solve many questions i want to solve very 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 little question and i should make sure that you all are understanding these questions so please make sure that you are understanding and if you are not understanding you just stop me any time and ask me questions okay don't hesitate even small stupid questions so i don't i don't have any issues with that okay okay so like what you know what what is the meaning of multivariate calculus anyone have you studied already function with more than one independent variables sir okay more than more than one variables actually that means what actually actually in our uh, i mean in, when i was in msc there is no course on multivariate calculus so that's what i'm asking so for me at least there is no course on multivariate calculus i don't know now anyway so functions of several very meaning some function from some higher dimensional thing like r and to some rm this the functions which are like from r and to rm r and to rm like r or euclidean space of r dimension n to euclidean space of dimension m so the man the functions from these two spaces we are going to look at these two spaces meaning subset of these spaces u subset of rn to rm like that so the this kind of functions we are going to look at today like this is the aim like studying differentiability continuity about these functions is the main idea of, of this topic okay okay that means what for f of x1 x2 etc xn so there are n variables will be there that's why we they call multivariable calculus okay so i will just directly go to derivative we are actually we will go we will see that for example if you see there is a function from r n to rm in in okay simply let me just see this first like suppose there is a function from r r to r r to to r simple case r to to r f of x comma y equal to x y by x square plus y square if x comma y not equal to 0 comma 0 so when when function when is 0 comma when x comma y is 0 this value is not defined right we as actually if you put 0 0 then denominator will be 0 i mean 0 by 0 we will get so that's why we have to define at 0 comma 0 when 0 comma 0 it is 0 i have defined like this so whether this function is continuous so this is actually very simple question in the beginning like this is for beginners so you must be knowing these things like this is actually i i hope complex analysis in bsc you, you must be learn this kind of things and in even bsc also there are some problematic courses you have done can anyone answer yes yes you can take the log about y equal to m continuous 
at zero. Y equal to yeah. So yeah. what? Yeah, like meaning first, can you just answer this? Then we can see the, what is the argument like. Okay. Yeah, answer. What is the answer? There is like yes or no. Continue or not? It is continuous at zero. Sir, it is continuous, continuous at zero. Yeah, it is continuous at zero. How? What is the argument for that? Okay, discontinuous at zero. Like what will be the argument? For every you find for every values of m, but different values of m, we get uh, different values. So, what is the criteria? Like there are many criteria for continuous. So, for example, I can use easy simplest ways actually. X and X and converges to X. Suppose there exists sequence X and in. Domain, maybe like I will just write domain D. I mean, there is a function from X to Y. Then I can say here X is in this, and uh, X and converges to X implies for every X and for every X and in this converges to X, F of X and converges to F of X. This is continuity criteria, right? There is a thing, right? If I don't leave continuous. This is some there's a there's a equivalent criteria, right? You can use this to prove that if it is not discontinuous. If it is continuous, you can directly any method you can use, like excellent delta method, also you can use like whatever you want. So now we we see that this is not this this is not continuous at zero comma zero. Why? As he said, like as one of one of you said, like we have to we can consider x is equal to mx. Y equal to mx, sorry. So y equal to mx. That means y equal to mx is what? So I mean, actually, the main difference is actually this is some point. Suppose we have some point here. This point we can. So when you approach the limit in real line, suppose this is this is some point. We wanted to approach the limit limit or continuity anything. Whenever you approach the real line, you have only two possibilities. Like you can approach this way or this way. Because actually there are only two paths to go away, go to this point, right? P. But in whereas in the R2 case, R2 or R N case, any case, suppose if we consider some point, there are infinitely many ways to approach this point, right? So there are infinitely many ways, actually uncountably many ways. So it is not easy to check right limit or left limit. Here actually we are using this is right limit and this is left limit. But here it is not the case actually. There are many uncountably many ways actually. So we have to check all those ways. So that we have to, we can find that it is limit exists or not. So, for example, here actually, as as one of you said, what we can consider is actually uh, m e y equal to m x, which which means what in the x axis. I mean, this is uh, r two r r cross r r two. There actually we can consider any line passing through origin. So this is actually x is equal to y, which means m equal to one. In this case, some other some other line we can take. That is actually some m equal to two. That means y equal to some two two x. This kind of line, like all these lines, like at a point we we have to check the continuity at the origin, right? So we are choosing all these points, all these lines passing through origin, and those are these lines, y equal to m x. So now we are going to approach along each line. So when you take fixed m, it will be approaching along this line. So it, this line, and then when you approach to zero, it will approach to zero. Like, I mean, we are like <coughs> we are going to approach along some particular line. That's the only main here actually. So is that clear? What we are? What is the difference between R and R and R two? There are only two ways of approaching there. So we are we can talk about right limit, left limit in R, but in whereas in R two it is not possible because actually there are infinitely many, in fact, in uncountably many ways to approach the point or approach a point. So there are many ways. So because of that only we are considering y equal to mx curve here. In particularly this example, to prove it is not continuous. If it is continuous, we have to do some other way. So our function is this, right? F of x, f of x comma y equal to x square. Sorry, what was that? X y by x square plus x square. y square. So if you fix if you if you fix this this axis, what is that this line? What is the function image? What will be the function image? F of x comma m x. What is that? 
mx square by x square plus m x square. This is nothing but x square. I can take a take common. M square x square. No, x square x square. One plus m square. X. It's x square plus m square. Oh, sorry, m square. Yeah. Sorry. Here also, yeah, here also, here m only. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, this is fine, right? So we just cancel. We can cancel this. Why? X is non-zero on that line. When when we are approaching to x, we are not equal to. We are not taking equal to x. This is non-zero when we approach to x. Actually, along this line. So when we along along this line, when we approach, whatever we are getting, the limit is actually m by. I mean the value is actually f of x comma m x is actually m by one plus x m square. Because actually x is non-zero on that line. I mean x is non-zero on that line, so we can cancel those. After we can take it out, we can cancel it out. So whatever we are getting is f of x comma m x is same as m by one plus m square. Now we can take the limit, but this is constant, right? This term is constant. See, you have to note out, note down. Here we can, we still have not taken the limit. After that only we have to take limit. Like now only we can take limit. We have not taken still limit. We just consider some. We we take, we just take the line, and that in that line we just up, we just apply what is the function. We just check the function value in that line actually. That itself constant actually. Like that means in in particular line this value this function is constant. That the constant value is m by one plus m square. So whenever whenever we are approaching along the that line to zero, we will get constant value that will be converges to same number, this number. So for for different different value of m, that means what m is actually here slope. This m is nothing but slope. This m is slope, slope of the line. Right. So when uh, what we can do is actually we have uncountably many slopes we can take, right? For every slope m, we have f of x comma m x equal to m by one plus m square, a constant. This is what we got now, right? Now we can take, now we can take limit, whatever. Like if you are, if you are m one. Not equal to m2. There are two slopes. Then which implies m by 1 plus m square not equal to m1 by m, m2 by 1 plus m2 square. So they are not equal, right? That means what? When we approach along different line, we are we, have, we are getting two constant values, two different constant values. Those are different because of that. Whenever we are we are approaching a sequence, we will get, we will approach to the when we approach to zero. We will, get, we will get constant sequence. That means x n converges to x, meaning here actually x n converges to zero along o equal to m m one x and m two x. There are two sequences we have considered. O n converges to zero along o equal to m two x, but this implies f of x n and f of o n. They are converges to they are, they are equal to actually m one by one plus m M one M one square and here M two by one plus M two square, which are not equal. Both are not equal, right? That means this limit is not equal. Like this, this criteria is actually not true. So that means F is not continuous at a point. Same place. F is not continuous at zero comma zero. Even limit of that also not exist. Okay, this this is clear, right? This example is clear, right? Any doubt in this? No. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now we will see some theory. Like I just wanted Sir. to. Yeah, yes. Yes, ma'am. Sir. Uh, Hi. How do you say to f of y n is m one m two by one plus m two square? We Which have f of y n. Yeah. Complex. Um, y is actually then, along this y axis. Y equal to m x m m m two x along this yes, line. Yes. I am approaching. So similarly, yes, same thing we can do, right? I can apply that x comma m one m. I I have I have written any m. In particular, m one m two also it is true, right? So it will get we will get the same, right? 
m1 okay. by 1 plus m1 square m2 by m1 plus m2 square right so okay sir sir uh, the uh, that means yes um, so okay sir okay thank you thank you yeah so okay now let me start some theory i mean some theory meaning some i have to introduce something okay so what is derivative differentiable derivative meaning what derivative differentiability we are taking changing one variable with respect to other variable we are taking change 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 when here we are uh, doing change in one variable with respect to other variable mm -hmm. that's the you, definition you, of i think the partial derivative is to oh you are no you are you are talking about uh, definition of derivative okay so okay, the definition something uh, okay okay definition that must be we, we use the classical definition hk tends to zero limit hk tends to zero at any point x not y not then f of limit. x not yeah limit x tends to zero yeah k tends to zero hmm. and also k tends to zero k is another parameter uh, uh, for uh, you are talking about for multi variables right okay i mean anything you can tell no, no okay, issue yeah. f of x not uh, x not plus h and y not plus k minus f of x not y not divided by uh, k minus f of x not comma y not divided by <laughs> divide oh, that's that's the problem i think i Okay. Anyway, it's just yeah. still for uh, only one variable. That I mean, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going yeah, to teach yeah. here. That's why I'm here. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to teach multivariate calculus. I, I'm sure you don't know. Like, maybe maybe you may not be knowing. That's what. So I'm I'm going to teach here. So don't worry about it. I mean, I was actually just asking for one variable. If you can tell anything, then fine. Yeah. Can you just tell me the one one variable case? So what will be that limit? Uh -huh. F dash of x. We will call this as f dash of x if some limit exists. limit h tends to 0 and yeah, h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x yeah instead of that i am going to use this maybe so limit another h tends to 0 yeah yeah like one minute actually i am not i am going to say i am going to say x limit h tends to 0 okay let let me define properly okay f of x plus h so r f of x divided is differentiable at x not in Open a comma b. If limit, if limit x not x tends to x not x tends to x not f of x minus f of x not by x minus x not exist, and we call. that limit to be f dash of x not f dash of at x not this is clear right i mean what we are doing is actually we are going just forming the quotient so this is same as this limit at tends to 0 see now run a little x plus h minus tap 1 so tip a little 1 run tap 1 mean tap 1 Uh, so this is the definition of that right these two are definitions are same actually so when when you are h h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x by h is exist and this limit should be defined to be f dash of x not i mean here f dash of x i have written x so i have written x not x okay this is the definition of limit right so what we are doing is actually here we are forming some quotient this is some quotient right quotient meaning what there is some top, there is some element and then divided by some other element that is what that is that what we we call quotient right that quotient and then using that quotient we are approaching limit we just look at this what is this i mean this is actually slope slope of a line let me check let me just just quickly introduce that suppose this is my curve some curve 
and suppose these are my two points and like suppose this is some point then x not so x y x comma y then this is f of x x comma f of x and this y comma f of y comma f of y and the quotient the quotient between this like meaning the slope slope of this line what is the slope of this line slope of this line is i mean this line equation is this one right y minus y not equal to m times x minus x not what is m which is nothing but y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 yeah here actually i will write one one i mean this is general line i'm, I'm writing here x y you can put you can replace x and y i'm taking i'm, I'm just confusing because of this x y coordinate so you can take here x in x axis you can take x x1 x2 and this will become x1 this this one x2 x2 x1 x1 in this way you can take okay this is the quotient of the slope actually what we are doing is actually like this so whenever we are having some curve so we what we suppose this point this point i wanted to have derivative then what i will do is i will consider some slope with some nearby point and i will approach this point near near and near whenever when i whenever i am coming near i will have some other curve new curve i will get finally i will i will get approaching to this point and then get some tangent this is my my the slope of this line is actually derivative f dash of x naught is x dash of p is slope of slope of this line that is what the meaning of here right actually what we are doing is we are just approaching via lines there are lines which we are approaching along so that we are finally we will match to th those lines approach to some particular line that line we call slope the slope of that line we call derivative similarly in multivariable we are going to cons we are going to construct that we are going to write it that we will look at later okay now i am going to i am going to say something from is this then we will generalize that to multivariable calculus now suppose this is my curve this is my curve this is my curve and these are some two points say this is my a comma f of a and this is suppose f of a plus h that means this is a and this is h this is a plus h this interval length is h right this a plus h this interval length is h this length now what is the slope so there is, this is the slope my slope right my tangent this is my tangent finally For tangent at a point this is my tangent at this point so the point where this is intersecting so this this point is there right this point where this is intersecting is nothing but f of a plus f dash of a into h that you have to look at why this is your question actually why i'm i'm just asking this question to you okay so why i am going to look at this way i will write that first so for example here So what I'm having is actually f of x plus h minus f of h by x minus, sorry, by h, right? Which is equivalent to, which is limit tends tends to, h tends to zero, which is equivalent to looking at f of x plus h minus f of x equal to f dash of x into h plus some error term. This is R of H is error, error time. That means what? R of H by H tends to zero. As H tends to zero. This is clear, right? This definition clear. What we, what I have done is actually this is same as F dash of X, right? This H we can take that side and limit we are going to remove because of that we are putting some error time. That is what we are doing. Like we just take this H that side. And we are just removing this limit by some adding error time. That's what we are doing. Basically, this is main main thing actually. This is what the motivation 
motivation for us for defining derivative and on multivariate calculus this error this is main actually this is clear right why we are getting this is there any doubt here no sir actually yeah now this r of h is here this length is r of h this r of h will be reducing when the tangent it, it will approach to tangent when we when this point is approaching to this point the r of h will reduce to zero and this now now we have to see some observation but what is the observation the observation is like this so suppose we are having this map this map is right this can be considered as some map and we are some adding some height it will give you some some number time height right only only consider this this point this part it is kind of linear right so add something i am giving x is fixed now i am going to give some height that will map to f dash of x into height right what is this map actually have you seen this map x has to has going to some constant time height right that means t of x going to some constant times x what is this map the linear map so it is a linear, linear map right linear map this is a linear transformation actually what we are what i am going to say is actually derivative at p gives a yeah, linear map linear map or linear transformation whatever it is that means what we know the linear transformation definition so here we have to show that here actually in this case actually we are having r r to r right some function is from r, r to r so like we are we are in r dimension one dimension so the derivative map is also from r to r this is linear at a point p it is linear so what are all what are all linear maps from r to r what are all linear maps from r to r only the alpha type alpha x type maps are yeah it's going to alpha x for alpha belongs to r right any alpha belongs to r so this is what happening here so f dash is actually nothing but this constant f dash is the constant f dash of x is the constant alpha in the linear map that is the multiplication constant right? that that multiplication number is there right that is the constant f dash of x so similar this with 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 this motivation we are going to define the map here like we are going to define the general thing so how we sir, can define is uh, yes sir. yes uh, sir here we have assumed that the function is differentiable means at that x is existing then we have uh, defined this in a linear approximation way right yeah yes so if the linear approximation is existing then that means if we defining the differentiation in this way then yeah, we that, have that, to convert once it is exists we are saying that is the differentiable at a point okay if, Actually, if what is happening is, is we are considering tangent space of i mean actually if you see differentiable topology way i mean whatever i am interested in is actually tangent space of domain like i will say like dom domain like suppose there is a map i mean this is so don't confuse with this i am just stating this only for like i mean no, 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 no. you want to understand okay so suppose some function some function f is from some open interval to r something for example i am considering open interval to r then whatever the derivative at a point f will be the map tangent space at a point p p in open interval 0,1 which is tangent space i am tp meaning tangent space at a point p of 0,1 to tangent space at a point p to r this is the derivative map this tangent space is this actually r this i sort of i come here map this is come here map to r that's why we are considering r to r map it is not exactly r to r for example this is my my domain r to r like suppose this is my domain in this point actually that for example if you consider some point the tangent space you no know, this tangent is actually full r actually like not not particular small thing domain is actually 
this linear map you will get alpha times some x this is what we will get actually so this is just star i will just write we don't have you don't have to consider with this yeah that's my question like if that you have given like derivative we define but if we have a linear map then similarly we can define corresponding linear map side right so we can define the derivative also right since derivative induces the linear map but if we have a linear map then we can define the derivative also right no no this you understood one point actually i yeah. I, I mean actually i'm defining always at a point p okay so this is one good question i will come to that okay. so i will come to that when when we are when we are coming to that i will ask that question same question i came okay so again i will write it again for your understanding limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of a by h <clears throat> equal to f dash of a we know that right from this what we can say this is if only if limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of a minus f dash of a into h by h equal to 0 this is this is fine so whatever if you if you are not understanding whatever i am saying the motivation just just for that just understand from here okay this is fine is there any issue with this whatever i have written no right no sir okay so i will use this as a motivation definition i'm going to define now let f from e subset of r n to r n r n to r m then f is differentiable at p if there exists a linear map we'll write it in dark here linear Map some script A. Script A is from R R N. This R N to R M. Actually, okay. I will I will come to that. R N to R M such that this this I I am going to generalize. This part is coming here now. How it is coming? Limit h tends to zero. Modulus of f of a plus h minus f of a minus script a h a p of h. This I will write a p by norm of h equal to zero. Suppose this limit exists. Now, now I have taken norm. So this is actually same thing I have written here. This, this whatever here here is there. whatever here is the this this content this this part this part only i have written here actually but only with norm why i have r i am i am in r n to r m that's why i have to put norm also I, otherwise i don't have to put norm here we are in only r so we can directly take it can be zero directly we can take a limit here to con, to make it sure, make sure this is going to zero i mean to make it well defined we are going to put norm also norm on this that's the only thing okay Here main thing is actually there exists a linear map at a point P. It is depending on the P. Actually, what we are getting is each point in E, each point in E, we have a linear map. That means what? Derivative of f at a point P is equal to the linear map A. If this is true, this is what we are going to define. Derivative at a point P is equal to the linear map. That means what? our function df derivative of f is a map from e subset of rn to set of all linear maps from rn to rm so in, actually what we are getting here is actually set of all linear maps from rn to rm it is is that clear because actually for every point i am giving some matrix matrix meaning some linear transformation that's why we are getting this this is equivalent to set of all m n of r so n m r or m n of r something just look at m n or n m that you have to see i mean yeah m n of r with with respect to some fixed basis that's that's important actually with respect to some fixed basis every derivative is actually some map from e to m n of r that means what some point if you give 
that map it will map df will map dfp which is belongs to m and of r matrix we will get matrix each point is a matrix not whole whole thing is not a matrix so the particular i mean whole thing is not a linear transformation or in particular point we have linear transformation every point is a corresponding we have corresponding to linear transformation so what like now you can get you can get the answer for the last whatever you were asking right so you were asking given a linear transformation is it possible to give that some that map or something right now you got the answer right i mean you you got the idea right yeah yeah yes Because actually, it is not particular transformation. We have to give collection of linear maps which are continuous. First of all, because this derivative map is continuous. I mean, if it is continuous, we don't know it is continuous or not. But if it is continuous, we have to continuous family of maps we have to give. Then we have we can ask the same question: Is it possible to give some linear transformation? That things actually we can go for research actually. This is fine, right? Now, is that fine? Any doubt? So whatever whatever I am saying is actually this one like. we are just imitating this 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 one to get some map something new which we have defined so linear map, like given a function f from r n to r m we have to have some linear map a such that this should be having limit with with the norm this norm also with respect to the norm here actually you can see that i will just write it again so whatever we are getting here is actually Limit, uh, yeah, limit such tends to zero. Right. What was the question? Limit such tends to zero. F of a plus h minus f of a minus a p of h by norm h, which is equal to zero. This is the main, right? Here you can look at. What is f of a plus h? F is from R n to R m. So we have to define what is this norm. What is this norm? So R n to R m, there is a map, right? F of a plus h. A is actually a plus h is belongs to R n, and f of a also a belongs to R n. So what? Where this this will belongs to a plus h? This two will both of them belongs to R m, right? So this is belongs to R n. This element is also belongs to R n. Now A P is actually mapped from like R linear transformation from R n to R m. So after applying H, H is actually belongs to where R n. So when you apply A P, apply to H, we will be in R n. So every every element belongs to R m. So this this norm is actually for m, R m R m norm. R m there is a norm we can define right in R m like dimension like three the m dimensional Euclidean space there is a norm. H m H n is belongs to R n. So this norm is actually R n norm. So they are not equal actually first of all. This norm is not both the norms are not equal. You could not directly cancel down and up. So you could not directly cancel. H. Suppose there are some element here. Here is looking same. Here you could not cancel directly. They are not same actually. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. When we do some, it will be clear actually. This theory actually, if you see the multivariate calculus, supposed to take on in ten classes. I just wanted to introduce in subtly, like so. It is not correct, but I don't have any way. If I have to solve some questions, I have to do that, right? Sorry for that. First of all. Okay. Anyway, this is this is just theory. Now we can go to question. Like, yeah, we have, we were asking this question. Like with this question, we have I have asked like e e from e subset of R and to R M. Then f dash is from which set domain and quorum in what? This we have I have I have answered this. In general, f double dash is from domain. What is the domain? And what is quorum? This I have to answer. This is our homework. This I have answered. Question clear, right? So if it's from suppose this is derivative, differentiable, two times differentiable, you can assume.
at least twice differentiable. Then this domain and codomain of this function we know, and you have to find domain and codomain on f double dash. Question is clear, right? You just think about it. Now we can ask, some, we can have some re, like answer. Uh, what is that? Yeah. Yes. Now what? Now example. So f of x, f f from. Rn to Rn, we'll just take Rn to Rn and f of x comma f of x. This means x in Rn. Okay, so this is equal to some constant c. Derivative of constant map. That is derivative of constant map. What is the derivative of constant map? It should be zero, but we have to prove it. Zero. Yeah. Yeah, you are right. Yeah. Derivative is zero, but how? Here is the good thing actually. Zero meaning zero matrix. Yes, we know that f dash is from same domain. Suppose here I assume E subset of R, then derivative from E to set of all matrices M n of R to M n N M N M N of R here. So zero is actually matrix. This is a matrix that you have to show. How? Okay, let's let's see the definition again. What we have what we have to find supposed to find limit h tends to zero norm of suppose this f f of x plus h minus f of h, f of x minus this a some a I have to put and h and norm with respect to m sorry here n here also n so h. This I have to find limit, right? We know that matrix A is zero. That means A H is equal to zero. We know that, right? This is equal to limit H tends to zero. This F of X plus H minus F of X plus H. This this value you can see, right? This is Z, this is constant. Constant minus constant. This we we supposed to prove this is zero, so we can assume zero. By num page. This is zero, right? Totally directly we can write zero. Then it is fine, right? So that means answer is limit is exists. Limit has to be zero. We have to show. To show. We have showed it. I mean this value is zero, so limit also zero. So automatically we will have this DF is actually zero map. Zero matrix actually. Set up all. I mean here also every point zero matrix. I mean, this is not correct notation. Zero. Is that fine? So, example two. Suppose, uh, sir. So, is it saying uh, that the differentiation of this means uh, it maps every point P to a zero linear transformation, right? Yeah, zero linear. Transformation. Yeah, yes, of course. Zero linear. Zero map. Yeah. Yeah. Now, second. Suppose that T from R n to R n. I, we can take R into RM also in here. here. R into RM. Okay, let's say R into RM. RM is a linear map. I am taking this itself linear map. I am. That's why I have written T. What is derivative of T? At a point P. What will be your guess? What's your, what's your guess? It will be the same map T. Okay, let's see. Let's see how. Okay, so now what I have to supposed to do is actually limit h tends to zero T of x plus h minus T of x. Some matrix I have to put that I will just book, put as a box with respect to m norm and h with respect to n norm, which is supposed to zero. I have to show. So this is linear. So we can what we can do is actually t of a t of x plus t of h minus t of x minus this box h and m. These two cancelled. Norm h limit has tends to zero. 
this has to verify we have to show this is zero i mean this has to be zero right that means t of h minus some box in box and h m and h plus tends to zero so what should be the map this this is some linear transformation so here this is linear map and this is some map if it if the difference on the divided by h is zero that we have to show so what will be this both are linear to try to show this is zero if we fix the basis like so we cannot we can say that if we fix the basis then we can say that t must be going to equal to the box otherwise t. yeah that's what see both are both are linear map actually this is also yeah, linear yeah. this is also linear so addition of linear what is addition of linear map those kind of thing you have to look at if you look at that way you will get the answer you just check this implies t equal to the box meaning what that means what derivative of t t at a point p equal to t okay so now i am going to look okay this is fine i think now i am going to say about what should we do uh, shall i solve some problem or like sir how you conclude here how how i am concluding i am just giving this to you work like your work actually you have to conclude that understood sir last to that hmm. box d of t p equal to t yeah this has to be equal actually why meaning uh, that, that's what that i'm saying see sir, after that d derivative at a point is t i'm saying derivative of t at a point p which is nothing but t itself okay sir if it is linear transformation that's what i'm saying actually this is also simple see this is actually a sum of two linear maps so you can take the sum actually out and then you can take t of t plus h. i mean suppose this is a t plus a of h then h can be like this norm can be separated and then cancel it those can be done that can be done actually you can see uh, because of finiteness we can say it is it will be bounded and also attains the bound something like yeah, that. yeah that those things also you can see yeah uh, actually which form we are using that place sir which one yeah the, the previous one which norm we are using what here is the actually norm m here norm, norm uh can you please once again tell me what is m norm sir m norm meaning usually like r n there is a norm right r in general r n what is the norm square root of x n square plus x plus x n x n square right okay that's what the norm of this oh some uh, somebody said uh, here we have to use supremum norm see actually that's what i'm saying here actually every norm is equivalent so in that sense you can use any norm oh okay is that, is, is that clear like any norm is equivalent right like in finite dimensional space any norm means uh, apart from finite dimensional norm, norm and supremum norm, norm uh, these two norms uh, hey, this norm and supremum norm otherwise any norm no actually finite finite dimensional case every vector space is actually equivalent if dimensions are same Okay. in that space actually norm norm in a space also like equivalent actually there are like if if that is a norm then they are equivalent okay okay if you have other norm also that is equivalent to find in finite dimensional case only like norm i am saying norm not not other things okay. only norm okay. equivalent Thanks. meaning there is a equal relation you can define that's what i'm not saying equal but equal you can yeah okay one one can be attained from other yeah I mean, anyway, there are some functional analysis courses you can ask that they will be explaining more. I mean, better than me actually. Uh, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Bias actually, I don't have time to explain. That's what. Anyway. Okay, okay, no problem. So, okay, so I okay, let me solve some problem, then I will go to directional derivative. Still half an hour only there, right? Maybe next class we can see of some directional derivative. Okay, this is some. I mean, this question you can directly solve. This maybe can you just take it as a homework or like? I mean, I thought I will have more time, but still, 40 minutes only there. So, can you what what we have to do this for this problem? F of x comma y equal to log of this. We have to directly find. We this have value. to differentiate differentiate yeah. with respect to x then y. Yeah, y. Then so y. this is your homework. Okay, you can directly solve. you can discuss in the class i mean in the whatsapp or something what about this one
any idea no idea sir no idea no idea sir you just have, you have to find only limit right just limit you have to apply that's all so we assume that limit exists and then we try to put the condition like y is equal to mx or something y is equal to x like that so to to verify this condition is it uh, okay but uh, sir i okay. think uh, mm. converting it to polar coordinates may work yeah very good that is great actually great idea yeah i mean usually when we are going to solve something it's better to reduce the coordinates so for example here two coordinates are there but if you change into polar coordinate there are, there is a possibility to reduce the coordinate because actually the theta coordinate is something different from other things right r tends to zero but theta may not be like whenever you do so theta may not be theta is actually reduced i mean size is reducing but theta is same right so polar coordinates actually so i mean that there is a plus point actually so whenever what you can do is actually x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta you can use i mean polar you are just changing into polar coordinate so usually when you want to prove something prove something is limit this may be helpful this may be helpful i am not saying this will be helpful this surely helpful this may be helpful so here also you can use the same what you could do what will be the what will you get actually when you substitute x is equal to r cos theta and y equal to sin theta sin theta whatever you are getting is i will write it actually if i if i have any mistake you just let me know more plus uh sorry is that clear is that clear what i am saying yes sir. Yeah, yeah fine sir fine no problem yeah. so other things will vanish right so i mean down here actually what we will get is actually norm yeah, this is norm so, so r will yeah, be this will contribute to this right yeah so now what we have to show this term has to be zero this is actually what what is this actually cos theta sin theta these are just coordinate like i mean the coordinate we are just angle is this right so in the angle actually this will be like giving you and cos theta sin theta like those are like some finite value and so it won't contribute much i mean it won't make you zero or something it won't make you much difference actually so what about this like this when it, when this will be like uh tends to zero this whole term tends to zero when and when hmm? when r tends to zero that means that r should be the coordinate of r should be zero right so that for that we must Um, so zero meaning mm -hmm. um, alpha plus beta no, no, should, should be less alpha? than 1 or r alpha? should be less than 1 r should be less than 1 then it is possible if i increase the power alpha this, plus this, beta these are bounded one. this is bounded right this term is bounded right this terms are bounded right that is yes. for sure right so no issue with that so only this is the issue right This r power alpha plus beta minus one has to zero. If it is it converges to zero, this is bounded. So totally, it will converges to zero. That is for sure, right? Yeah, exactly. Correct, sir. Correct. When r power r r is actually positive, we know that r is positive polar coordinate. So r is greater than zero. R greater than or equal to zero. So that means when like r power something is zero, when converges to zero, when minus infinity, minus. No, this alpha. r is actually past two term. Alpha plus beta must be greater than one, right? No, no. Yeah, sir, minus one greater than I, zero. I think, I think, sir, since x y goes to zero, that implies that r should be tending to zero. So if r goes down, that it will hmm. tend to infinity. So we want that alpha plus beta minus one should be positive always. Yeah, That's yeah. Important. This is what here, here actually. See, what is r actually? R is this, right? R is greater than or equal to zero, right? And what we need actually? when x tends to 0 x comma y tends to 0 we need that means what in the in the polar coordinates whenever we are having ray which is going approaching to 0 whenever we are approaching to 0 we need to find the answer right 
approaching to zero meaning what? The R is going to zero. That means we have to find this value. This converges to zero when R approaches to zero. What is the when when that will happen actually? Whenever R is approaching to zero, automatically it will happen only when R is positive. If only suppose R is negative, then R R will be one by R, right? That case actually it will be tends to infinity plus R minus infinity something. So that that should not happen, right? That's why we are having already positive. We have to we have to put the condition. This this one this is the condition, right? Alpha plus beta should be greater than one. Correct? Is this fine? Yes, sir. So, yeah. So that's fine. What we uh, this is fine. This set is what is this set actually? This set is nothing but this. So what they are asking actually, like uh, third one, sir. Yes, yes. Be the set of alpha, alpha comma beta in R two such that this limit exists. Set of all. I mean, we are they are considering yes should be this. Yes is actually set of all. Alpha comma beta such that this is greater than one. This is what we have found actually now. So from that we can see that we need s should be contained in some set. So from that we can see that this is exactly set this set. This is the set we want. This is actually equal to s. We found it. What about other other things? S should be contained in that set. Second also true. Second also true. Yeah. So sure. Yeah, because alpha is greater than two and beta is greater than two, then their sum will be always greater than one. So, yeah. See, s is contained in contained that set. In, yeah. S should contained in that set. That set that should not like it's not. You are saying in the reverse way, right? Am I right? Option yeah. one. Set should contain. Alpha greater. Alpha greater than zero and alpha beta greater than zero. Yeah. Why alpha and beta were greater, greater than, than zero? zero. Yeah, alpha beta. No, no, alpha that's not zero. correct. Eh? The second option is correct. Alpha sir, first one is correct one, sir, because the third set will contain in first one. Why? Because alpha is greater than zero, beta is greater than zero. That if I choose less than half, obviously it is uh, greater than one. Here it is greater than one. I can choose less than or equal to one also inside the set one. So and also See, greater than also one also inside. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. But I'm saying here also you have to observe this alpha plus beta is have to be greater than one, right? This is the set actually. Like if you see, you can draw the graph alpha plus beta equal to one. What 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 is the graph of alpha plus beta beta equal to one? In our alpha zero, it is one. Straight line. Straight line. This line and uh, greater than zero, greater than one, right? This region, uh -huh. right? This region. But in this region, it has to converge also. That also you have to see. R should be positive. This has to converge also. That also we have to look at. Is that clear? What I'm saying? Okay. What about fourth condition and the? I mean, yes. Okay. Second and the, this, this second character. Why? Yeah, yeah. Alpha greater See, than two. For example, beta greater. for example, I will take one by two, one by two. Alpha equal to one by two, beta equal to one by two. Uh, one by two and two. Uh, Alpha equal to one, beta equal to one by two. Is that this element is belongs to two? Second one? No, that doesn't. No. That does not belongs to that, right? Mm. Is that belongs to that element? No, right? So second is not true actually. Yeah, second one. I think first one okay, sir. Yes. Yeah. We need to first one okay. Fourth okay. one we need to think, sir. Hmm. Okay, first one. Okay, what is the argument? Actually, it is a bigger set. Comparatively, first set is bigger than three. That is contained in uh, three is contained in one. Three is contained in one. Okay, fine. Yeah. Hello, that sir. Is fine. I mean, that uh, yes. Sir, three uh, three cannot be contained in one because uh, if I take uh, alpha to be two and beta to be half minus half. Then yeah, that's what that's what I was asking actually. See, why alpha and beta is non-negative? That you have to show. That's why I'm not saying answer. If if you if you are proving alpha and beta both are non-negative, sorry, yeah, non-negative, then then we are done actually. I 
I think fourth option is correct because if we draw the line similar to like that, mm. then we can yeah. understand. If you that. draw the line, what you get? Yeah, we one will get two. a one by four. One, one by, by four, four on the y-axis and yeah. one on the x-axis. Yeah, this 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 figure again. You have to say. Yeah. I mean, you have to say alpha and beta, alpha greater than zero, beta greater than zero. Why? All the Hello? points, sir, except the axis. Sir. Hmm. If you draw the diagram, except the axis, sir, remaining all the portions are covered. Like our first quadrant, except axis, all the things will covered by the first set. That first quadrant, end it first quadrant, except the axis, it will cover. Yeah. Which one? Uh, first one, right? First uh, option. Yeah, first yeah. one. First one. Hmm. It will cover except the first quadrant axis. Remaining thing, it will cover in the first quadrant. Mm. Yes. It obviously, your th third set will contain in first. Yeah, that is fine. But but why why alpha and beta is negative? I mean, not positive actually. This 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 we need to answer, right? See, alpha beta belongs to be R R two only. They have given. Why that has to be in? Is question is clear or not? See, alpha beta has to be. Greater than zero. That we are that we are assuming actually. All all of you are assuming alpha beta greater than zero. Why it has to be greater than zero? I'm asking. If if it is greater than zero, these two all I mean these three, three answer also correct actually. As as you have said like this 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 graph also above this, and other things are correct. But why this has to be greater than zero? I'm asking. Alpha and beta has to be greater than zero. That you have to show. If it is less than zero, then it will come one by r, na sir. It will goes one ah, by, one by r. r. Yeah. Then that's if what r tending to infinity, yeah. it goes infinity, ah. na. Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's the issue actually here. So if you have to argue in that way actually, that's what. That's the observation. So we are we are only thinking of this function. We have to look at this thing. If x comma y tends to zero, that we have to look at. Is that clear? So why I am not answering that's everything that's directly? Why I am trying to answer from you? Because actually we have to observe all the things. First, you have to observe this, and the alpha beta also. Somebody, some of some of you missing actually in R and R2, which is which is in R2. You are all, always assuming R and alpha and beta are positive. That is not true, right? Like we have to we have to observe all these things. Is that clear? No. Yeah, fine, sir. Fine, no, fine. Yeah. So we have, we have to use the fact that x comma y tends to zero. If x comma y tends to zero, what will happen? This, suppose alpha and beta are negative, then what will happen here? This this term, what will happen to this term? R power, some all this these two are negative, right? It First of all, this is equal to. Yeah, this denominator. this comes to the denominator actually. When you apply to zero, what will happen? That's the issue, right? This this greater than or equal to zero is not true. Then that's the issue. So yes, it will yes, not sir. go to zero. Is that clear? Yeah, fine, sir. Fine, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, is there any? Somebody yeah. have any issue? Yes, yes sir. sir. If uh, one of them mm -hmm. is positive and the other one is negative, for example, if alpha is uh, two and beta is minus half, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, alpha plus beta will be uh, two, uh, one and a half. That is three by two, which will be greater than one. So in that case, the power of r will be positive, and then the limit will go to zero. I mean, I'm saying. Mm. No, actually, that that part. Uh, no, what are saying? One minute. Just tell me again. Al if alpha, alpha is, is two mm. and beta is minus half. So alpha okay, plus beta minus. Case. Yeah. Still, uh, the power of R will be positive. Yeah, but here actually, uh, if we write x comma y equal to r cos theta r sin theta, what mm. is the meaning of that? Mm. R cos theta r sin theta x x power something. We are writing actually x power alpha x is equal to r cos theta r sin theta, right? Yeah. So when when we write one by x x power one by x, if we are writing, I mean one by x one for one by x, 
I mean, this is nothing but actually x comma y equal to e power uh, i theta, right? Yeah. E power uh, some r, r into e power r, theta. Yeah, r into e power i. This factor only we are considering, right? So, what is the meaning of this alpha and beta? Alpha x power alpha y power beta. Uh, okay, so that will be included in the theta along with theta alpha theta. I uh, mean, it will be r into e to the power i alpha theta. No, this will not include it here. Actually, no, no. yeah, okay, okay. So you could not directly write in, if you take inverse, you could not directly change that. Actually, that's what I'm oh. saying. So oh. that factor will be issue actually. Okay, you just think about it. We will go to next question. If you have an issue, that you can contact me tomorrow, next class, okay. day after tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So what about this question? Limit. Uh, I mean, if f(x) comma y equal to one minus cos x. X plus y by x square plus y square. If x comma y not equal to zero and zero one by two, I mean this question. What about this one? Any idea? Okay, let me say here. Say the hint. This we can take as a w. This we can take w. That means what? I mean, x plus y equal to w. Then whenever x plus y tends to, I mean, equal to zero, w is also equal to zero. Then what? This will be become one minus cos w by <clears throat> w square. Now we can apply only for this. We have to show this is one by two. Then it is continuous. Is that clear? What I am saying? Yes, sir. Yes, so this is. x plus y is some other new variable I'm considering, like x plus y equal to some new variable w. So that you just you have to find the limit. Limit of this you have to find. Limit x tends to x plus y. Whenever we are going to x plus y equal to zero, that means whenever no, no, I, I mean we are using the fact that w square sir. The denominator no. how you are putting w square sir. Yeah, x plus y equal to w I have taken right. Ah yeah, x plus y equal to w. Then x square plus y square. No, x plus y x plus y the whole square only here, right? Oh, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm asking for second rule. Sir, zero point zero point in determinant form we are getting. Then we are taking derivative with uh, Laplace form. Yeah, yeah, whatever that you have to, that your work actually you have to do. This is just directly you can take derivative. Actually. See, there are many ways of doing it. So you it's can continuous at zero zero. Yeah, of course, not only zero zero every point actually. You have to check why. I mean, this is actually general. I'm saying. See, whenever x plus y tends to zero, x plus y tends to zero. Uh, I'm saying w also tends to zero. We are actually x plus y equal to w. We are x plus y is continuous map, right? If you consider x plus x, I mean, some map f of x comma yeah, y goes to x. Yeah, continuous. So because of that, actually, we can say that this w, whenever this goes to zero, this also goes to zero. So I'm I'm going to define this like this. Now we can take the limit of this. So whenever this is zero, meaning where when it will be zero, it, x is equal to minus y. For those points also, it is continuous. Other points, you know that this is just some map which is, uh, I mean, quotient is non-zero, and uh, numerator some continuous function, denominator continuous function, so totally continuous. That fact you can use. So this only we have to check this point. Whenever x is equal, x plus y equal to zero. But I'm I'm making that as a w and w equal to z. Whenever we are having w equal to zero, I mean I'm just making it to one one variable function. That's the, that's what I'm not doing anything new. I'm just changing that into one variable function. See, whenever we want to show the limit, try to use into one variable function. If you change into one variable function, then it automatically easy to look at. Is that fine? This one. So three and four are fine, right? Two also fine. Two also fine. Why? Because if I take y equals to minus x in the first function, that will give us zero. But the value of the function is one by two, so it is not. What? What? What are you saying? Why? 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 Uh, I I will take y equals to minus x in the first f or f. Why equal to minus x? Yeah, y equals to minus x. Yeah. Why equal that... to minus x? Right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, great I... actually. Yeah. Yeah. Why equal to minus x? If you take what you get is actually. Zero. We will get zero here. Cos zero one, so it will be zero answer, right? Some x square. 
I mean, here actually x square plus 2x square you will get. Finally, it will be 0. Like That means 0 function, which is going converges to 0, but the function value is 1 by 2. So it is not true. So this is not continuous at a point 0, but other points it is continuous. As, as we said already, like other than other points, it is continuous. Above also continuous, and down also but continuous function, so total function. Yeah. That is great observation, actually. Yeah. Is that fine? So what we are doing is actually uh, f of x equal to 1 minus cos x plus y by x square plus y square they, they have given. So we are, what we are observing is actually here, here whatever we have done is same here. So x is equal to minus y, all these points, this is not continuous. So here also x, if you put x is equal to minus y, you will get this term is 0. So totally this function is 0 uh, on those line, on the, on the line x is equal to minus y. So that line, on that line it is 0, meaning that along this if you approach, to the point 0, 0, whatever you are getting limit is actually same point 0, but the function value is not equal to limit point, that limit approach, whatever the limit we are getting. So this is not continuous at a point 0, 0. But otherwise, true. Uh, all other points, it is continuous. Because actually, cosine is one, remainder is remind, like both the things are continuous. Numerator, denominator. So uh, automatically, it is continuous. Yeah, is that fine? Can I go to next question? Okay. 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 Uh, this question. Okay, you may have to learn. Uh, okay, let me just go back to here. Uh, okay, can I? In 15 minutes, I will try to finish something. Okay, now, now let me define this directional. Derivative. So directional derivative. So do you know directional derivative meaning? So we are having derivatives, right? We can define for direction. In each direction, we can define the derivative. That's what here. So for example, let me define this from R to R be a function and V be a vector in R M. Vector meaning that is that is V belongs to R M. Then, I mean, this V also at a point P. Then, the directional derivative at P is defined to be DVF at a point P. So DVF is V is actually reference point, reference vector. V is also at a point P. So what is the meaning of that? So if we have some vector, some point is there, from there we can draw some vector V. That is the point, meaning of that. So which is nothing but limit t tends to zero if this limit exists actually. P plus T U V T V minus f of p by t. If this limit exists, this quantity we call as a directional derivative. What is the meaning of that? This this we have seen already, right? This kind of thing we have seen. How we have seen? This, this quantity only we will add, right? Usually p plus h we will put. But here we are putting in this direction actually. What is the meaning of that we will see? And the partial derivative. Partial derivative meaning direction v should be ei. Each each direction we can define partial derivative with respect to xi by v choosing v equal to ei. That means what? Partial derivative of f del xi at a point p, which is same as f limit t tends to zero f of p plus t e i minus f of p by t. This is what this limit exists, then this is a partial derivative. So this this you understood, right? The, I will explain the meaning of that. So this is the figure of that. Like suppose, for example, this is my graph. This is my base point point here. And if I if I have some 
this is my surface. Some surface is there. Some, I mean, some graph is there. This is the graph of function. Then what? What we have is actually in this figure. This point is my reference point. This particular point. This is point in the graph. And when whenever I am taking direction, this is my direction. This this line is actually my direction. When we have this direction, we have some line along this, right? We have some line along this. Same thing. We have this line. This line can be taken here by cutting the plane. We can we can have a plane which cutting this which is parallel to this, like which is which is going along this line and cutting this plane, cutting the x-axis, like perpendicular thing. So which is a perpendicular axis. Actually. This is a perpendicular plane which is cutting this. That will give you some 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 curve here, right? Some curve. This is nothing but we are just having this is as a x-axis, this line as a x-axis, and the y-axis is something. This is that axis as a y-axis, and this curve is actually the curve in the this curve will be the curve in x this in this domain x x I mean r cross r. In this r two we can see this as a function r cross r function we can look at. So given any function r into r, we can look at that as a function from r to r. R to r by looking at this cutting a plane along some particular line. So that is that is what called directional derivative. How we are getting given a point, we have to consider some direction. The direction will give you some straight line. The straight the straight line straight line you can use the straight line to cut a plane. You can cut a plane along plane with along perpendicular plane that will cut you cut your surface also. That that will be giving some curve. That curve is actually in. That curve can in the in this particular plane, this graph is look like. This graph is actually this particular plane. So you, you can forget other things. Only this this plane you can consider. This plane you can consider. In this plane, this is some. This is x-axis. This is y-axis, and this is the graph of that. That is what here happening actually. And this particular point is clear. So we can have direct usual derivative like tangent. You can draw here. Like there is a tangent here. So this is the tangent. At a point, so when when we are moving this way, the tangent will be this way. If you are moving opposite, the opposite it will come. So this is what the happening here actually. So whatever we are getting is actually the usual derivative, but we are doing in R n. So in particular direction we are fixing and doing in that direction. That's what the meaning of this. H H H P is will give H P will give you V we will have V is this direction H P will give you each H H belongs to R. We will have full line. That's what we are getting. Is that clear? So, in other words, I mean, these are some. These are the slope. This is the slope. I mean, this is the slope at a, this part. This curve. So, this is the curve, right? This is the curve when we cutting along, like for the reference plane. This will be the slope. Like the slope in R, like in R, we can see the slope, right? Same thing in this. Like, meaning we have only one curve. It's we can look at this as a R to R function. That's what the meaning of this. So here the definition clearly like yeah, this is x-axis and this this curve can be taken like this. So usual derivative also we can talk of whatever the usual derivative we are talking, you know, that is same as this. So in each, I mean, this is the same as actually uh, whatever we are writing in real line, real numbers, right? Real number also we are writing the same. That is what is happening here. Is that clear? Any doubt? Any doubt in the definition and understanding? Basically, we are considering some some curve. I mean, some some line that will give you some plane. When we cut along that plane, we will get some curve. That in that plane, we can look at this, that as a x y and x y plane. I mean, it's like r to r function. There you can talk about derivative, usual, usual derivative, whatever we are we are usually deal with in r cross r to r r r r r case. We can do the same here. That's what's happening here. Is that clear? Any doubt? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is what happening here. So now this this much is fine. So this partial derivative is nothing but whatever you are taking usual derivative. This directional derivative is important actually. This 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 is actually important. There are some questions regarding this. Okay. I will just state some theorem and so that you can use. I mean, I will. Actually, what I'm going to do is actually I will give every questions to you. If you have time, you can solve them. Maybe if you are not having time, next class we can solve. You can help me. We can solve them. 
and uh, i mean anyway whatever we are anyway we are going to solve it but before that i am going to introduce some theory so in 10 minutes i will try to introduce okay so theorem uh, so f is from e subset of r into rm differentiable at x in e then partial derivative f of xi of x i mean here actually this function will be f of x1 etc x1 will be f1 etc f1 of x1 etc x1 right fm here so we have this uh, yes any doubt uh, we have uh, in the in the screen we we see the graph only oh you have seen you can you can see only graph is that no, fine sir it changed i don't know why it's fine yes yeah, slide you can see right ah yes yes can you just rejoin the meeting once again to avoid this network yeah you can see this i mean okay anyway so suppose the function is from r into rm and the differentiable at x in e then we have this partial derivatives each i mean this is actually coordinate wise functions each fi is actually coordinate wise function fi from r into r so now we can talk about direction like the direction derivative usually we are we are having we can we can talk direction derivative from r into r so each function we can talk about direction derivative so that direction using the direction derivative we are defining in the direction of e1 e2 etc en that will give you partial derivative these are the partial derivative this pass suppose this is differentiable at the point x and this partial derivative exists and i mean then actually this 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 is differentiable at this then this will exist and derivative of f at a, at a point x is nothing but the matrix partial derivative f1 uh, f1 by f1 partial derivative f by f2 etc partial derivative f i f1 by partial derivative fn same thing here will come fn by fx1 partial derivative fxn by fn by uh, here fm by partial derivative xn so this is the matrix with respect to some basis that is important actually with respect to some basis not any basis actually we, what we will get is actually some linear transformation what we are getting is this is some linear transformation from r into rm that we can look at as this matrix so that matrix is coming with respect to some basis this is important it is not coming directly it is some with respect to some basis okay is that clear is that clear yes sir yeah it's fine yeah for example if you have some directly f, for example f, f from r into rm i mean so for example to r2 to r2 f of x comma y equal to xy then what is the matrix df at a point p you, you can directly take derivative a partial derivative with respect to x which will be y and the partial derivative with respect to y which will be x sorry x uh, y with respect yeah we have to write some other map also that's also right x and y square it is r2 to r2 so this is this and y for y it is 0 and 2y so this is the matrix at a point p is that clear this is what we are we are doing nothing nothing else whatever you have seen in the two variable de derivative that is what we are doing so nothing else is that clear so whenever we are having r2 to r2 there is a map derivative meaning we just take a derivative coordinate wise and then filling this matrix okay. that's what we are doing yeah even more another thing i am writing suppose if f is from r and to r differentiable at p and v is a vector in rn at p then dv f of p is nothing but del f dot v del f meaning what 
del f is actually derivative derivative of f which is nothing but partial derivative with respect to x1 partial derivative with respect to x1 this is what like with respect to f so this 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 is the derivative right if rn to rn we will get the matrix this matrix right n by n like 1 by n right that matrix actually we have to consider there we have to take dot product with this if we take dot product with v whatever the value we are getting is actually the rational derivative if f is differentiable at point p this is important if this is this is at a point p it is directional if, if, if differentiable at a point p then this is the value actually you don't have to consider the formula like this formula you don't have to use you don't have, you don't have to use this formula i mean this formula you don't have to use directly I mean, directly you can directly take a derivative, partial derivatives, and then dot product with this. See here, actually, there are many linear algebra is playing role. Why? Why this is happening is linear algebra. You can look at. I mean, so actually, there is no time. I could not say anything. Actually, every this this will become basis in the uh, tangent space. That's why any vector, any vector also we can write it. In that way, that's why this is like each each time is actually tangent vector. So clear. So because of that only we can use this actually this way. We can write as a dot product. I mean these are these are like linear algebra playing many role actually. You can look at. If you have some good book, you can look at. Let's see. Okay, maybe I will. I can. Uh, okay, final theorem I will state and then maybe stop today. Or if you want to have some more example, I will tell you. R and R and then f is continuously differentiable if and only if at a point p. P also you can take only if the all all the partial derivatives. Exists and are continuous. Continuous P around P. So uh, that means what? If is if is different continuously differentiable, if I not leave this. So if you wanted to make it, if is differentiable, then what you have to do is actually around the neighborhood. If all all the partial derivatives would exist for F, and all all of them are continuous. Then we are done. This is the main theorem. Actually, it is very important theorem. It says that no need of considering any any function and then taking direct derivative test and all. Directly you can consider partial derivative if 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 that is exist and then they are equal. Then we are done. That's all. So this is very important theorem. Okay. So is there any question? Sir, what a small example? Yeah, I can give example here. Like maybe I can give example. So, for example, uh, f of x comma y equal to some x y plus y x comma f is from R two to R two. Sorry, x y plus y square x comma and e power x, something like that. Then we can easily see that these are, I mean, these are derivative differentiable function. I mean, I'm I'm giving easy example actually. If you see the derivative is each partial derivative of these two. To these two functions exist and are continuous also because I am considering this as a continuous function. So automatically we can say that this is differentiable. This function is differentiable. Even the other derivatives also like whenever how much derivative this is continuous, that much times is this derivative is also this function also continuous differentiable and all. So maybe I will just solve some one question, one or two question. Yeah, one question maybe maybe I will solve this later. Uh, some yeah maybe this question. So this is uh, okay. Shall I just solve this and then stop? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, this is the function if they are given, and I have to take the linear linear transformation given by this at a point x comma y. At a point x comma y, I have to find this map. You can directly take a direct derivative actually. Directly take if you derivative of df is actually nothing but what partial derivative with respect to <coughs> x. Partial yes. derivative with respect to y, and the partial derivative. This is f one, f one, f two. This is f one. This is f two.
What is answer? Fourth. Fourth one, sir. Is that true? Take derivative like two uh, x and zero. First one. Yeah, zero and uh, second one. This is actually uh, cos x and two y. First one, sir. Yeah, first one. Answer is first one. Is that clear? What what we are doing? This is very simple sum actually. Actually, if you see, if you understand the definition of multiple calculus, every sum is actually simple. Almost every sum is very simple. Just we have to spend some time. That's the only issue. Is that clear? Can I stop it? Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, fine, sir. Fine. Sir, maybe suggest linear. Suggest linear algebra books. Are you told linear algebra books? Suggest linear books. Linear algebra book you want. Ah, yes, sir. Linear algebra. Okay. Sir, yes, sir. Okay, li linear algebra. Come on, linear algebra. Linear algebra. Ah, uh, I will suggest. Artsler. The book name is actually Linear Algebra by Dunright. Algebra Dunright. This is very good book actually. Even IIT also they are keeping this as a textbook. So I mean, not only for that, but I am saying there are many nice problems. If you are, if you really solve those questions, you will be master in Linear Algebra. So I, I will, I will suggest this strongly suggest this book. There are other books like Kumarasan sir book is there, and there are like I mean usual textbooks like most of the people tell those things right. But I will suggest this mainly, and there is another book actually scam series is there scam series book scam series scam. I feel like scam spelling I don't know. You just check it scam series. Some four hundred like thousand problem solved or something. There are some there are lineage bra book. In particular, some thousand thousand problem solved I think there is some. Problem solved book. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. That book also you can take. Like that is Thank you, sir. to understand the concept. Like if you have more power form, you can understand it. Yeah. So I mean, the, today is actually theory class. Uh, I mean, almost theory. So is there any doubt actually? No, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, maybe. Sir, sir. Ah, yes. Yeah, we have defined the directional derivative from functions from R n to R. Can we define yes. for the higher dimensions also? Higher dimension meaning R and R we are defined right? uh, to yeah. R and R to R M. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah, of course we can define like same thing, right? Like in the same way, like meaning actually if you define that, actually what we will get is actually function from R to R M. R M. Meaning this is what we are defining, right? Indirectly we are defining R to R M. What we are defining R to R in R and to R. So this means what? Instead of this R and to R M, we can think of like uh, I mean, there are there are many functions, right? F and F is from this meaning, F equal to F1, etc. F1, right? If each term is having partial derivative, then I mean, which each each having like, if you take any vector v, it will give you uh, like in that direction, right? Everything like yes, sir. every in coordinate way like each okay. coordinate we can define actually. I mean, this is not correct way to define, but there are some definition in that way, right? I mean, I'm just screaming motivation. I'm saying I feel like we can define it like that. And one more thing, sir. In a higher dimension, when we define the derivative, we is somehow uh, uh, in a background we consider that that our domains would have some algebraic contents. Like in, in in real, when we are when we define for the real numbers, sir, we don't care for that. But here, when we are uh, talking about the definition in R into R M, when we define the norm, we usually exactly we use the uh, like vector sum, sum of vector sum, right? And property of linear maps that are. So I don't understand. Like which 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 kind of property we are using? In D. I mean, you are you okay. mean R and right? Defining okay. R when we are R. when we are defining when we are defining uh, for uh, the when we when we defining definition norm of f of x plus h minus f of mm -hmm. x minus a h, right? So use you you use the vector addition like close under vector addition of R n to make that norm. And the nominator to be defined, right? Yeah, same thing we have done in the R also. Right? R also is vector addition. So, right? so that's so what that's, definition. That's what my yeah. question. Like, it, so to define the differentiability, somehow we need some algebraic contents always. Yeah, I mean, 
R also we are using the same, right? I don't understand. Like real numbers also we are doing the same, right? F of x minus f of a by x minus a, meaning there also are we are using addition condition, right? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Maybe I think uh, I think I should think my question more properly. I'll ask yeah. you to. Yeah, actually you can ask this maybe like why we are need norm to do that. Like h tends to zero, why we need norm? that is that that's reason also obvious actually when you do norm when you convert this to zero that norm is also norm is actually will will take like this right whenever we are having circle circle tends to zero like circle yeah. wave will like converging via the circle actually that's why we are taking norm otherwise we could not define particular number right yes, yes. i mean to zero meaning we could not define that's why we are taking norm and like we are via spheres or spheres actually in, in two dimension in high dimension spheres in particular two dimension circles Along circle we are approaching actually. That's what we are doing. That's why we are taking norm. That's why we are. That's why this is also great actually. Cos theta or sin theta. This is also easy to do because of that only. I mean, this is also helpful because of this manner only. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Any question? Yeah. There is no question. We can leave. If you have question, you can stay and then ask. Okay, Salu Kumar. Thank you very much oh. for your nice oh, okay. chat. So we will yeah, meet thank you. Uh, again in the Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Salu Kumar. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mail any pita link and that is. That I will put on the mail. Ah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. I will put. If you are class, then that is all. I will put. That is. The link will be on the mail. That is. You will get automatically. Okay. Yes. That is. Let's say no send. That is. No matter. Okay. Yeah. Ah. You want to say some reference for that? Are it? I mean, for several variables. Any questions that you can ask in the WhatsApp? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was that me, sir? Yes. Um, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Salukh. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.